come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a quest for world domination. That's right. We want to become the fastest growing movie podcast in the galaxy. And who knows? Maybe we are. We, we don't even keep track of this, but I mean, you, you are an when integral... you're at the top, you don't you don't pay attention. That's right. That's yeah, I mean, it's ours. And, uh, you know, uh, you good people at home are an integral part in this. And all you got to do is hit that like or subscribe button. Yes, because we want to be the both. algorithms with your help. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Holly, Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Sean. Finally. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. After a slight delay. Yeah. What did we watch tonight? Uh, we watched 1981's Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker. Oh. Also known as Tinker Night Taylor Stopper Spy. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Tinker Taylor Mother Psycho. Yeah. That works. Milk. Well, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we got to add milk in there at some point. It was originally made, I Tinker think. Taylor Mother's Milk. Oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh yeah, it that, works though. That's yeah. where we're going with tonight's movie. I mean, there there is a character named Mother's Milk and the Boys, so it, uh, maybe you pulled it from that part of your brain. Maybe <laughs> gross. <laughs> so it was uh, made in eighty one, released in eighty three as mm. Night Terror, Night Warning, Night Warning, uh, Warning. Uh, directed by okay. William Asher. Do we <laughs> know William Asher? <laughs> yeah, we you, do. Let's put it this way: you should know William Asher. William Asher uh, basically. Developed sitcom directing. Mm -hmm. He started out in I Love Lucy back in the fifties and stuff. Before that, he did stuff like the Colgate Theater, um, probably the Donna Reed Show. Anything you see on TV Land right now, uh, he probably directed episodes of it. So he shit, I grew up with years. Yeah, he's directed every single episode of Bewitched. Every he was married every to Elizabeth Montgomery episode. as well. Really? Yes. Yes. Well, shit. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He is. <laughs> I a, was shocked when I looked at his IMDb. I, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. You'll see him in the credits for I Love Lucy and all that stuff. He's uh, prolific. Um, you, like I said, you should all know him. Yeah. Um, he like led, you know, Nick at Night Block Party Summer. Yeah. yeah basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I believe this is his first, aside from like maybe TV movies and all that stuff, this is his first theatrical movie. How old would he have been when he made this Old! Movie? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I don't know well, the exact okay. age, but yeah. yeah, because he was an older gentleman when he started directing all that stuff. So, And this is near the, uh, I believe, the end of what he was directing. But So you can, that's right, if you try hard enough and work your way up through TV, end up directing a slasher movie. Yeah. Um, is it a slasher movie? It's like a psycho bitty slasher movie. Mm, okay. I don't think it's a slasher movie. Mm -mm. I, don't I don't think, think it's a slasher so movie either. Here either. But I, I mean, I know for a while, you know, when I used to see it in the video store, Night Warning, it looked like a slasher movie. Right. Packages a slasher movie, and obviously it has debt to the nineteen yeah. eighties uh, slasher movie yes. cycle. I am. Um, I don't really understand either title. <laughs> yeah, neither well, title really. She's she's a the butcher. She's the baker, and she's obviously not she's, baker. A, she's a nightmare maker. maker. But oh, she's baking. Oh, well, that's right. She never was she really baking? Yeah, she didn't bake shit anything. in this movie. Mar Margie it's, bakes. It's supposed to be the representation. Margie of, bakes. Of, of, um, <laughs> of yeah. the mother of the 1950s sort of mother. Perfect Margie mother. baked and look what it got her. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Margie. Sorry, Rayburn. It was a beautiful um, cake. <laughs> So how, hey, she stuck around for way too long. It's kind of her fault. Not point. well. Yeah, no. She yeah, should have got out true. when the going was good. Yeah. Um, she so, should have known when the lightning started striking. Margie like, oh. was brave. <laughs> how did this movie? Uh, how did William Asher end up uh, directing this movie? Do you know that? Uh, I don't specifically know, and I think it was sort of based on a book. But I don't know how he got involved in it. I was like, well, he didn't write it. I no, didn't, I didn't okay. see that it was based on a book. But when I did my uh, googling, that it's like based on Oedipus King. Uh, that makes sense, you know. And I'm like, no, I, I, some of the ideas maybe, but sure, a, yeah. clearly it's not. Um, was that Sophocles? I think that's Sophocles. Anyway, um, this was not. He was not the original director on this. Oh no, they wanted someone else. I forgot. The no, name. they had someone else. It was uh, some guy named uh, I think Michael Miller who had yes. directed a movie that I liked. It was uh, Jackson County Jail with okay. Tommy Lee Jones and Mimet. Mimet. 
Yvette Mimieux. There we go. Yvette Mimieux. Uh, and he got fired. So he had Jan de Bont, the cinematographer. Oh, yeah, he shot actually, for like wow. Jan de Bont shot for like a week on this movie. The uh, opening, really? the opening, yes, the opening decapitation. And All right, that wreck. makes sense. Right, and it's just like, well, he made his mark in this movie for only being there for a week. Yeah, then uh, they were fired, I guess, because. He, they, he was too slow or something at the, mm-hmm. you know, whatever the process. So they hired William Asher, who was like, he could do stuff fast. Yeah. Cause he had worked in he, TV. <laughs> he pioneered all the techniques, um, in television. So who's in this movie? Uh, Susan Tyrell, who we would know from angel, which you mentioned during this. Like, Cry oh, ba- yes. Cry baby. Yep. Cry baby. Cry which baby. I have not seen. Mm-hmm. You haven't seen it? She plays Johnny Depp's grandma, yeah. Ramona. No, I have not seen Crowley. I think that's my favorite John Waters It is movie. absolutely my shot. favorite John Waters movie. Wow. Okay. Sarah yeah. Mom's close second. It really it's made me like Mom's Tracy Lords a lot, actually. The it's uh, uh it might just be the nostalgia for me. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to say. Mm-hmm. Cry baby. It's mm-hmm. like the John Waters grease. <laughs> yeah, it oh, really right. is. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember Johnny Depp being on the front. He's kind of got that grease. Yeah, look. he's a yep. greaser, but they're yep. like hillbilly greasers. Yep. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Considering it's pretty that. entertaining. You it's should watch typical it. Typical okay. John Waters townies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun well, stuff. Susan Tyrell also uh, big top peewee. Anyone? Anyone oh, I don't think I've seen big top peewee. Yeah. She was, uh, I remember her voice is very distinctive. Yes. She was, uh, I think she worked a couple times for Ralph Bakshi, the animator. Uh, I think she was in Wizards. I know she was in Fire and Ice. Uh, she won an Academy Award for Best Actress. Um, but that was, I think, like in the 60s, okay. maybe. And then, um, yeah, I didn't, I mean, Angel, she was in, she was in uh, this, and she was also in uh, Forbidden Zone. Uh-oh. Which we oh. did. On the oh. Saturday Night Freak Show, all three of those. So that means that we have inducted uh, oh, wow. Susan Tyrell to Yay, the Saturday Night Freak Show. welcome. Bravo. She so. deserves it, and I can just see her picture just staring at me on the wall. <laughs> right. She, those eyes. I will say, she goes hard in everything she does. Yeah, yeah. she does. She does. She goes hard. Which makes me wonder how she is in real life. Mm-hmm. Because that she goes this hard and is. These I feel characters. like she is like this in real life. I feel like that too. Yeah. More so, maybe the character from Angel. <laughs> yeah. That's like why you cast her, right? Because she's like this in real life. Right. Yeah. Because, uh, okay, so is her style of acting, is she over the top? Yeah. Yes. Definitely. But okay. Definitely. It is, but also, like, she is cast in parts that require that. Yes. Yeah. That that works for the part. It seems like her performance is always, she's just barely keeping the lid on whatever's going on, whether it's like a rage boiling up inside of her. Yeah. Or it's like, she's just barely keeping the lid on it. The and whole she time. has the ability to switch between them very quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The very sweet motherly one, <laughs> especially when she's making people drink milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, she was never really aggressive. Like, she was really aggressive mm-hmm. in this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, there yeah. was moments when I was like, shit, she's like mauling these people. Yeah. yeah. As an, you're saying, like, as an actor, like, in a scene with her, like, she she's almost like, feels like a loose cannon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like, anything could happen. Like, I guarantee there were injuries for making this movie. Yeah, like, it, she's, it act- like she's actually hitting her co-stars. If, got pulled. Yeah. if she was making movies now and was, like, a famous movie star now, everyone would be talking about her method acting and how mm. she never gets out of character and she does all this crazy stuff on set. Yeah. Like, I feel like all those stories would come out. Oh, shit. That's right. She was in, uh, we, we did uh, Andy Warhol's Flesh for Frankenstein sign of the show she was in bad andy warhol's bad yeah uh, yeah oh. so she's been all she over the place alive? doing stuff no unfortunately she um i can't remember what the disease was that she contracted was some kind of um blood disease mm. and have her legs amputated oh, shit. Uh, oh shit. johnny depp apparently held a uh fundraiser for her at la's viper room oh. uh, wow. but she did she passed away oh yeah i feel like nowadays she'd do well on the uh um uh, con circuit. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, oh, just yeah. for the stuff yeah. that she's been in. Mm-hmm. I mean, in, enough intersection with genre stuff that, yeah. you know, I right. suppose. Yeah. Um, so who else is in this movie? Anybody we recognize? Uh, I don't know if anybody else recognizes Jimmy McNichol. I don't, besides the fact he looks like a young Mark Hamill, but he got chosen because they wanted a star in this role, um, but I don't know him. I was like, that name sounds familiar. Is he related to Christy McNichol? Yes. That's 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 her brother. Okay. Okay. And I don't remember him either, but apparently he was a teen idol in the nineteen early 1980s. And according to Wikipedia, uh, again, I don't remember any of this, but uh, he was like his stardom was such that like TV series 
or in TV networks would make variety shows to feature him in them. She's I don't doing remember. Wow, like, really? Yeah. Just, wow. just because like I recognize the name, I believe everything you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know. I mean, it seemed like he was in like a bunch of stuff. Little House in the Prairie. I mean, like yeah. every uh, you know TV okay. show that was out, he had like a, a supporting role. In, I'm or, sure you know. he was on the Waldens at some yeah, point. Right? Yeah, right. Guarantee stuff it. like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and not the not the main asshole cop, but the other cop. I recognize him. You he, do. He yeah. was in yeah. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which we did on the show. Which oh, we did on the show. Yeah. An F troop, right? Right, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> an F troop person in this show. But he also looks like Travis, so that may be also why you. He, his, no, uh, he's familiar. His name is Britt Leach. Uh, that's the actor. Britt Leach. He was, You've seen him in everything. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, the, he was the guy who uh, owned the toy store in Silent Night, Deadly Night. Yes. Um, okay. And he was also uh, in The Last Starfighter. Oh, shit. Oh. Yep. So there nice. you go. Welcome he, to the wall. Welcome to the yeah. wall. And thank you, <laughs> MF Mad, for uh, pointing all of this out. Um, the asshole cop, Bo yeah. Svensson, yeah, who you would know from Walking Tall Part Two and Three, yeah. So he, <laughs> where he plays a much nicer, better guy in those movies, but he also does play in those walking around with a giant stick, beating people up, which is yeah. Great. But those oh, were okay. huge, huge movies, huge movies. And um, what was the name of the actor who originated Buford? Puff? It's Bo. It's also Bo. No, or something. Uh, oh God, he's. Oh, shit, Didn't I can see his face. I can't remember. Remake his name. with the Rock. Yes, yes, they yes, did. They did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna look it up because I ju- I watched. That's why when, you're, of them when you said Walking day. Tall, I was like the Rock. Yeah, <laughs> I can see his face and I can't remember his yeah, name. Hold but on, I got it. But yeah, but Bo Svensson took over in uh, Part Two, Walking. Joe Don Baker. Joe Don Baker. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, wow. But he was also, um, you know, what? Joe Don Baker. Yeah, I do. Yeah. But we mm-hmm. saw him last in, I think, um, the Delta Force. He was the captain of the plane. Yeah. Yep. In the Delta Force. Um, Has he been in one other thing? I don't think so. <laughs> Damn it. Not yet. We haven't put him on the wall, but Bo Svensson is on his way. Um, going through the main cast. Oh, Julie Delphi uh, from Newhart. Duffy? Julie Del- Julie Duffy, yeah. Duffy, yeah. From yeah. Newhart. From I Newhart. didn't remember her. I remember Newhart. I don't remember her. Yeah, she was uh, one of the main main actors on that. I must not have seen it in a while. And mm. I guess she got that one year after doing this movie, right? But probably I, I after, can see the connection. Yeah. And, Therapy. Uh, Steve Easton, who plays uh, Tom Landers. That was the coach, right? Right. Coach yep. was Tom. Yes. Uh, he is on the Saturday Night Freak Show all Oh, right? really? Because you've also seen him in The Hidden. Oh, yeah. And okay. in Con Air. Oh, wow. Okay. On air. He wow. was old man. Guard Falzone. Ah, okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. So there you go. Well, there Congratulations, you sir. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the hallway. That's right. And the uh, yeah. your and certificates are in the mail. Yeah. yeah. And we also have a um, freak show repeat. Bill Paxton. Oh, right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Who's already uh, an, a freak yeah. show alumni. Yeah. Right? Who's, but yeah. back to back. <laughs> back to back. Two weeks in a row with the Pax. I, I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is a, a pretty good cast. Yeah. I guess mm-hmm. is what we're, we're telling you here. And one of the greatest openings in movie history, true or false? Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's a different it's, movie. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It grabs your attention. The opening yeah. is a different movie. It was all downhill, literally and figuratively. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's, uh, you know, because, you know, you sit down to see a movie and you're like, okay, what's this going to be? And I guarantee you, listener, if you give this movie a shot, uh, <laughs> ten less than five minutes into it, you're gonna be like, "Okay, I'm watching the rest." Yeah, of it, right? you, yes. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. Within like three minutes, of this movie was like, "I'm, I'm on board." Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, let's it's do nothing this. Else for the elongated death of these first yeah, so two what, characters. Well, well, tell us what happens. All right, so it opens up on uh, a couple uh, packing up their car and leaving. It looks like on a trip, and they're leaving their young son with um, probably someone's uh, his aunt. His, his, his aunt, aunt yeah. yes, um, which is Susan Tyrell. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then they're driving through the mountains and is this in Colorado? He said he's going to go to the university of Denver at one point, but they're in the mountains and everything. And yeah, uh, it's clearly California, but I think it's supposed to be Colorado. Okay. Um, and so they're driving through the mountains, uh, downhill and all of a sudden their brakes don't work. And so they start driving out of control. Um, they may notice all their clothes hanging on. A yes. Rack, yeah. That was weird and fun <laughs> but they're out of control and um they end up crashing into the back of a tow truck that has a 
a large, it looks like a telephone pole sticking on the back of it. Mm -hmm. And they were final destination. Yes, they were. Yes. (laughs) Right through the face. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I mean, that was because I guess I didn't expect it from this kind of movie. Right. Right. You know, I didn't know exactly what I was getting into, but it was like, holy fuck, it takes that guy's head like clean off. off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and then for the next three minutes, it's an elongated crash over a hill and then into, <laughs> into a long drop into yeah. a ravine because and then a stop. With the woman still alive. With the woman still alive. Yeah. The woman's then, still alive in the car and the car is impaled on this log. Yes, being dragged. Yeah, being by dragged it. behind the truck while it's like fishtailing yeah. around and she's still alive in the back. She's trying to seat. steer and yeah. then goes over the edge. Yep. And the car explodes. Yes. yes. After a, after a, a a good comedic pause, yeah. the car blows up. And yeah. This is a final well, button. The, yeah, but this is how you edit these things. Yes. For yes. Yes. I mean, like, this is worthy of study because it's, it's, it, it's just it's so it, it's so jarring because this is after like the, the first like 30 seconds of this movie looks like a lifetime movie. Yeah, yeah. it does. And then we get this final destination scene <laughs> and like this car accident is brutal and goes on for so long yeah. like the car getting whipped around on the impaled log yeah. finally goes off the cliff and flips like end over end a ton of times yeah. lands like like well, then smashes it goes off the other cliff because yeah. that's when i was like oh yeah. shit it keeps going it went off it another cliff going. and then landed like nose first down yeah. into like a shallow creek bed smashed into it and then yeah a few beats later explodes yeah. I laughed yeah <laughs> yeah that is a, a clap worthy moment yeah. it really yeah it really is like, yeah, like bravo oh, yeah and then, all right so then we settle into the movie proper and what mm. what's going on who are our characters and what are they doing well we are with uh, what's it, Billy is Billy it? Billy mm-hmm. is his name uh, we find Billy and his aunt. Susan 14 Tyrell. years later. 14 yeah. years later. Cheryl? Shh. Yeah. Aunt Cheryl. Cheryl. Aunt Cheryl. Um, and uh, right off the bat, we get a little uh, a feeling that... <laughs> something Cheryl, ain't right. Something ain't right. <laughs> Cheryl is definitely not on the up and up, just based on the way she wakes up her Yeah, because she like tickle, tickle wakens him. And she she's purrs like, like a cat. cat. Yeah. yeah. It's too sexual. It's, r- it's I don't like real it. weird. Real weird. Real weird. Immediately... Had flashbacks to sleepwalkers. Yep, I was like, oh, oh, yeah. don't like this. Yep. <laughs> so already you feel like there's something off yeah. in this movie, if you didn't already from, mm-hmm. the, from the opening. I had that same icky feeling I had when we watched the baby. Yes. Yep. Yep. It never quite get gets to that level of grossness, but I'm, it's still uh, not. Uh, gross. Uh, there's a couple of moments. There's some. <laughs> that feeling. Licking. Let me yeah, just. But like, I feel like you guys are forgetting how fucked the baby. <laughs> no, was. No, I remember how fucked the baby Adults was. Adults just acting and dressing like. Babies. No, yeah, no, it was totally fucked. I'm just saying the icky feeling never left yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You're it may like, not have reached that level, yeah. but the icky feeling never left. So you were like, uh oh, are we in for another one of these? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I sure. mean, there is a lot of milk related trauma in this movie. Tell so. me about it. <laughs> it's it's always roofied and he's always drinking huge glasses of yeah, it. There, there's a he lot uses of it as a weapon against somebody. They, <laughs> they drink milk every day at lunch. Yeah. At one at one point Bill Paxton gets milk pilled uh poured over his head. Yeah. Oh, there's just lots look, of milk. Why did it look thicker in the eighties? It 80s? looks like <laughs> I don't understand. It was <laughs> like white paint. It was it, yeah. it was whole milk. Oh, whole milk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually to, for filming, they probably used cream. Ew. Oh. Because it, it looked really thick and white. It, it was probably cream, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. And you guys were like, what the, why are all these people drinking milk? And so, I'm much like, milk. so much okay, milk. Okay, so I remember, you guys know the Got Milk yeah. uh, yes. campaign. Yes, yes. That but does it, a body good. There, yeah. yeah. And that was the big one before it. Yeah, so I'm like, was that just a thing back then? Because, I mean, I do remember oh, yeah. uh, drinking a lot of milk. For a long time. No, uh, I, I drink a lot of milk. That's why I drink milk, because it does a body good. Yeah. I drink milk as a kid. Right. But, like, once I was able to make decisions, for myself as an adult i have not drank milk nearly on that i rarely yet. drink yeah. milk but however rarely. i'm not kidding my brother drinks a gallon a day yeah. i am not it. kidding Kelsey oh my god the, not kidding right strong bones okay he's like foot. fucking wolverine at this point <laughs> like it's the bones are ridiculous yep oh milk and spinach that's all you really okay so um you all right so uh billy uh it's is a story of a of a young man growing up and and trying to move away from his mother. I think that's mother. it, right? He's at he's 17. Yes. So it's time to like, you know. Yeah, she's very overbearing. She's very protective. Yes. Lots of like 
he can't be away from home for too long without right. checking in. It's a very she has every she has his future plan. It's for very him so controlling. That he can stay with her. Yeah, she um, doesn't want him to go to college. She wants him to stay. No, she has arranged for a job for him instead yeah, of college. She says she can fix up an apartment upstairs for him, so he never has to leave. So he wants to bring his girlfriend over for his birthday party. And she says, I'm going to be your date tonight, Billy. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way <laughs> Susan Tyrell says things, it's. She also like the shape of her face and the yes. shape of her eyes is very un. un I'm trying to think of a nice word. I, unnerving. Like, it's I don't very know. Unnerving it's unnerving based on, yeah. again, when we're talking about her eyebrows, her, her pencil thin eyebrows in this movie and every movie. She that has I've these seen kind of like almond shaped eyes that are kind of at an angle that look a little alien almost, yes. you know? And she has these high, severe cheekbones and this kind of wider face. And it's just a very intense look. It is an intense look, kind of, but kind of built into a, a, a 1950s mom aesthetic. Right. Yeah. Right. Which she did makes remind it even me, more creepy. She did remind me of Kathleen Turner and Serial yes, Mom a little bit. that's what I was yeah. thinking. She yeah. says she yeah. got that vibe to it, which it all works, I think, very well with William Asher being the director of this mm -hmm. movie. Because it kind of feels like if just Lucy went psycho. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Because I was thinking of, you know, like, uh, well, Faye Dunaway. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, no. I'm thinking earlier, Joan like, Crawford if they made 50, 50, 50 oh, sitcoms sure. with yeah. her yeah. in it, she could be transplanted over, I think, pretty easily. I mean, you know, she'd bring all of what she's got with it as well. <laughs> yeah. <which is> like <laughs> creepy, but she fits that mold pretty well, which makes. Um, everything she does far more unnerving in this movie. Now I'm just picturing her in the various roles in uh, Bewitched. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she could be uh, Aunt Gladys. Uh, yeah. Probably pretty easily. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Or, or the nosy neighbor. Yeah. Oh, and Miss Kravitz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She definitely, she'd be she'd a great be Miss Kravitz. She'd be a great Mrs. Kravitz. Yes. Yeah. And why they never thought of this since there was, uh, well, I guess he maybe didn't, uh, the director didn't know her until later in his oh, career or whatever. But we do get a Mrs. Kravitz in this movie. Margie. <laughs> Margie. Margie. <laughs> That's She's true. the next door neighbor. Yes. The beehive uh, little lady who lives next door. Yep. Always um, nosy. Always wonder. Hello. She's the baker. Or we think. She is okay. the baker. Because yeah. uh, 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 Cheryl is the uh, the pickler. Yes. <laughs> That's a great pickler. name for a killer. Yeah. A great name for a serial killer who kills his victims and then pickles them and leaves them for the cops. Yeah. Sean, the pickler. Write it. 2022 right Saturday Night Freak Show copyright. Yeah. The pickler. And then and then you get that scene like in um like in Seven or True Detective or Take Your Pick where like they're going down in the cellar and they have the single flashlight. It's all dusty and this the flashlight just like scans across Cost and it's like jars. pickled and it's mostly normal stuff <laughs> right. until they or, land or on. Even, or even in sweeps past and you see you see like celery and carrots. Yeah. Fingers. Yes, exactly. Yes. But you don't, you see it, but they don't linger yeah. on it. You're just like, oh, well, they are setting. They are setting something That's up fantastic. for a, a, yeah. <laughs> later a in the movie, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was. I like, mean, that, uh, that is, that is kind yeah. of a reveal. She pickled her husband. Yeah. Um. So, uh, and they live in one of these houses that uh, it just seems like it goes straight up. You know, it's like there's a lot of staircases yeah. going up. There's an attic that's never been anyone has ventured into in 50 years. It's covered with uh, the, the cobwebs. Yeah. There's a storm <laughs> cellar or whatever that you have to go outside the house yeah. to get into. Yeah. It feels like if you start at the top and fell down, you'd go for a while. Yeah, before for a while. You, uh, Billy is into basketball. He's uh, trying to um, get a scholarship. I yes. guess like that's what he wants to do is leave the house, leave Aunt Cheryl, go become a basketball player. Um, and so it all seems like everything is kind of clicking together, except there's, you know, obviously uh, Aunt Cheryl doesn't want him to leave. How far is she willing to go to keep him there? Because I think that's what basically starts this thing off. Is she's like, she goes down to the basement. After mm -hmm. Billy's like, I'm leaving. It doesn't matter like what you say. Uh. She goes... Was it down to the basement? She went somewhere and she has this shrine. Yeah. Yes. And the shrine has a black and white photograph of a man. I think this is the one where she got to it through the, by the candelabra. She had to like pull. Yeah, she uh, had, it was like a crawl space that was boarded up that she yeah. like pulled the boards down. And yeah, she like she hadn't been there in a guy. while. Right. Weird. This is uh, Chuck. Chuck. This is Chuck. Chuck. Uh, and she starts talking to Chuck like, you know. <laughs> Chuck Stranger, I think his name is. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, if only something... Sounds like a 70s detective. Mm -hmm. Something will happen. Next, I'll stranger. To make him stay here. And what's going to happen? What's she, gets her, she gets her TV fixed. Oh, yeah. So the repairman comes over. He's been there a couple times. 
and she is she's a lonely woman a desperate woman it would seem she's been without a man for a while it would feel well, has she because billy's been there Ew. Colin, <laughs> without a man. That's disgusting. And you know what I mean. Okay, but, He's a minor. But He's we, a 17 year old boy. But we okay, none be. of that matters, first of all, yeah. in this movie. Yeah, that's right. Okay, it I, matters to me. Well, yeah, someone, someone clip out Sean just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what we're trying to set up. The, Age doesn't the, matter. The family dynamic here. <laughs> Thanks, Michaela. Is that. She has basically, like, he's the man of the house. Yes. Right? He does everything around the house. Uh, there's the, there is heavy implications that she has a, an incestuous interest Desire, in him. Yes. Um, and so then this guy comes over, mm-hmm. and then she's, like, throwing herself at him. Yes. And then, but he rejects her um, for different, many reasons we'll find out later. But he rejects her, and then he slaps her at one point. And then she, uh, she obviously doesn't like that, so she grabs a knife and stabs him. I know it's all gory because it's eighties, and we got to do. It's not Tom Savini gore, but we get you know bloody gore. And so she stabs this man to death. Yes. Billy witnesses this because he's coming home from practice or something, and sees it through the window, and comes in, and she's like, "He tried to rape me." Mm. And so then and I he's think he's pulling a knife out of people's necks, and why do people keep touching murder weapons? I know. So now he's holding the murder. <laughs> this is the weapon. other final destination part of this. Where they're pulling <laughs> knives out of people for stupid reasons. Yeah, and don't hold on to it. And then, yeah. and then you're getting the evidence all over everybody because she's like, oh, you know, and like rubbing oh, yeah, the yeah. blood all over his face and his clothes and her clothes. Right. So they're both freaking out. And then, big old handprints on Margie. Yeah, yeah. Mar- and then Margie and her <laughs> husband are like delivering a cake, and they come over and 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 she's hugging her. <laughs> and my and, and one of really and one of my probably my favorite line of the movie was um, when she said, make sure you say something nice about her canned tomatoes. And he's like, but I didn't like her canned tomatoes. Like they were awful. <laughs> they, they were terrible. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a, that is, uh, yeah, that is such a kind of uh, sitcom neighbor thing. Like, and make sure That's you great. mention that you like this. Yeah, one. Margie was great. She had a couple Margie of was Margie great. Was I loved Margie. Especially later on when, you know, when uh, Cheryl had cut her hair. That whole interaction. <laughs> that was fantastic. Like, oh, what'd you do? <laughs> what'd you do? Like, it's something. <laughs> it's something. It's the new isn't thing. It, isn't, it, isn't it the knees? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. And she corrected Billy when he's like, what'd you do to your hair? Right, she oh, it's him. the new thing. Yeah, it's so great. Um, Love Margie. She's, so, good. she's a good neighbor. <laughs> so now we've got murder. Murder. Right? And do. then the cops come in. This is uh, mm-hmm. Bo Svensson. Bo Svensson and, comes and in as a very... As the worst. <laughs> as the worst person that you would, yeah. A, want to know, and B, to be a cop. And he's a, te- yeah, he's a terrible cop. He's a terrible, terrible person. Terrible cop. And he runs the department. Yeah, basically. that's what I got out of it, because it's like everybody seems to answer to him. He's like yeah. the head of detectives or something. Yes. And so he comes in, and so he's all like bluster and intimidation, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And so it's like, okay, you got a crime scene. You got uh, the kid was holding the knife and he's covered in blood and she's all bloody and we got a dead guy. Mm -hmm. And like right away, he's basically like, this is not. Yeah, she didn't do this. He did it right. You did it, Billy. And so he kind of like the first thing he says to uh, the other cop is like, you believe in self-defense? And he's like, nope. Yeah. So I think that's where they're getting this uh, theory. Yes. That he's just going to run with. Like full steam, full steam right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it is found out that the repairman, it turns out, was in a romantic relationship with the coach. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Didn't the- see that coming. <laughs> uh, cue a lot of uncomfortable dialogue. So uncomfortable. Yeah, there's a lot of very uh, homophobic dialogue. Yeah, yes. it made me mad. It <laughs> just keep when you think it's done, it just keeps going. Just yeah, they kind of beat you over the head with it. Yeah, it's like, bad. Maybe now, granted, excessive. you are, yeah, it's excessive. excessive. It's excessive. Yeah. Now, yes. granted, you it, are supposed to dislike the character that is initiating this awfulness, but right. still, yeah. it's still and a bit much. I, it, yeah, like I feel like there's an argument you could make where you could probably reclaim this movie and reclaim it as like a like a queer movie because like it's an example of how queer people are treated in life, yeah. you know. Right. So like yes, I get absolutely. that, but just know what you're getting into. If yes, you're going to approach For it sure. that way because just when you think the guy's done talking, nope, he just keeps going. <laughs> he, he just, just keeps, keeps going, keeps, keeps going, yeah. and then yeah. you don't see him for a couple scenes, and then when you see him again, you're like, okay, well at least he got that out of his system. No, he's gonna keep no, bringing it is, up. That is yeah. his system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. specifically awful. the slurs. He's throwing yeah. slurs, the slurs around like left and yeah, and it's it's so uncomfortable. It made me question Bo Svensson. Yeah, it, yeah. Like, yeah. I hope he's too good at it. 
It's uh, way yeah, too good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, but but when an actor's too good at something, it makes you wonder if there's a part of them that is that way. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, it made me wonder. I'm like, is Bo Svensson like? Because I know nothing about Bo Svensson. Yeah. But I'm just like his. How does he feel about this? I, I yeah. have no yeah, idea. Yeah. They had to know because I mean, you wouldn't say that the the script itself is treating the coach. I think with some respect. As oh far yeah. As- no, like as as far as like the characters and everything. Yes. The co- the character of the coach who is the queer represented character is delightful. Yeah. He's the, yeah, he's he's, cool. he's yeah. the most lovable character. And it is the villain that is saying these right. slurs. Yes. And, yes. and Svensson knew yes. that that's right. who he's yes. playing and yes. what the dynamic is. He plays it. Like, he, you want people in the audience to hate he is, this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the coach is caring and wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. So that's not the problem. And the Svensson kids plays it, love him. The kids like, love him, yeah. 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 Svensson plays it, I'm going to say great, because yeah. that is what the character is supposed to be. Yeah. So he plays... He plays shitty real well. It's just yeah, hard to does. watch. Yeah. 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 He d- he just says those slurs with such venom and like his delivery is But so it's also he's got punctuated. That, yeah. He's got a southern yeah. lilt. To yeah. It. He's got a southern lilt to the snap though, which yeah. kind of, you know, mm-hmm. it <laughs> they well, I was gonna say the slurs drizzle out of him. Yeah. That's, he, that's a weird he, word to describe. But it. he does those like <laughs> southern backhanded compliments yeah. constantly. Yeah, too. but that one about you know you gotta hold your wrist yeah. a little limp like when yeah. you do your your shot. You know, like, yeah, you do a little swish yeah, or whatever. Yeah. That yeah. shouldn't be difficult for you. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. just yeah. oh, I later punch on him. he's Whoa. interrogating a prisoner by like he's like sit on the floor. And he brings his gun out. And yeah. It's like, gonna, yeah. It's like, okay. So there, this is a, like a caricature of a bad cop. Right. Yeah. Um, yes. But for the the plot of the movie is like, he locks on to the idea, right? Because the repairman, the dead guy is gay, mm-hmm. yes. right? The repairman, yes. The repairman is gay. Uh, that that means that Billy is it was in some kind of love triangle between the coach, the mm-hmm. repairman and himself. And so they had a lover spat and he killed him. And he is like bound and determined yes. like the, he, but this is the thing. Like he misses, he's not looking at like uh, any evidence. He's blocked everything out because this mm-hmm. is, I've figured it out. This is, I just got to prove it. Yeah. Right. Even while the other detective is actually sitting there going like, you know, this, this woman, Cheryl, I keep looking into her backstory and things just aren't adding up. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so well, I was we all say, blanked. Well, well, no, I didn't blank. I was just thinking, but it's not a, it's a ridiculous thing for him to follow, but it also could make sense. You know what I mean? Like the situation that Bo Svensson is thinking about could be a possibility based on, not on what we know, but what, you kind of walk into the scene saying like it's a possibility it could end up the way he's thinking. Well, even the coach at one point goes to see the detective. Mm -hmm. This is after the detective like confronts the coach, like at the basketball game, like you should basically quit, you know, or you're going to get lynched, lynched, you know, once this gets out. And so it does. And then everybody knows what's going on. Um, But he, the, the, the coach comes to see the, the tech, the detective. And he's like, you know, this guy, which is his boyfriend, was married once, and so like right. it is actually possible that he may, you know, that he may be <laughs> right. That he would have maybe would have tried to rape, yeah, uh, Cheryl. Cheryl, yes, Susan Tyrell. But the detective is like, you're just trying to cover for Billy, you know, because yeah. he's like, it's it's totally Billy. So <laughs> he wants to prove that Billy's actually having sex with his girlfriend, right? So he goes and interrogates her. He's like, I need to know you guys are making it. Yeah, which I haven't, which comment I've got because I haven't heard that uh, right. descriptor of it in a long time. It's like that's none of your business. Yeah, poor. But, but this is why this movie's not a slasher movie, right? Because we know who the killer is because we saw it happen. Yeah, and it's everybody else in the movie trying to figure out what we already know. Yes. So, well, the suspense then is what? Like, how long is this going to go on for before this is, the other yeah. shoe drops? Right. So, exactly. You know, it's like, and you're watching kind of the stressors pile up on that domestic yeah, relationship. Because it's like, will they, it's gonna pop. will they solve it and figure out who actually did it and what actually happened before she completely loses her mind? Right. right. And you know, how that's many people the... will get murdered in the process. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, Bill Paxton, who said, also is uh, in the movie. So he's like um, a teammate on yeah. the yes. football team. and Basketball, uh, but okay. Basketball. Oh, sorry, the basketball team. <laughs> 
and he, on the sports team. Yeah, it's a sports team, and there's a okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> and uh, well, we already covered the fact that he gets milk dumped on him at recess uh, or something when they have like a fight. Recess. <laughs> lunch hour. <laughs> it's high um, school. <laughs> they, did they not have recess in high school? It's lunch hour. I wish, it's just, man. It's just right? lunch hour. I mean, you could go to the playground. Why not? <laughs> did your high school have a playground? Sh- <laughs> I came from a small town. We were all in one school. Oh, wow. So oh. you could, yeah. in high school, go to the playground. Wow. Okay. Yeah, they're just all like one one big complex. There was 300 people in my graduating class. Jesus. <laughs> my graduating class. There were probably like yeah. 50 <laughs> in the one I went to. Not a lot. Well, so so what happens next in this plot? Then? What what do we have to like maneuver into position here? The, uh, the police are closing in on Billy. He's under investigation. Yep. Billy is becoming suspicious of, well, he knows that uh, Aunt Cheryl actually killed uh, yes. the guy. And so he's, yeah, he's uh, taking the, is he, did he take the rap for it or does she say she killed him? She says yeah, she killed she, him. From the get go, she's like, I killed him. Right. Remember, she's like, he needs to know I killed him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, this reenactment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, please, get a, go get a wig. And, yeah. You know. That's I can, right. She I can glass of milk. <laughs> I can do this. She is this is a good Halloween regular. costume. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. You can dress up like uh, <laughs> crazy Aunt Everyone, everyone would think I was cereal mom. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Um. So, God, I'm like, I'm losing the plot here. Like, uh, somewhere in there. We get to. <laughs> oh wait. Well, I think this is when I don't want to just I, jump I, to the end. I no, guess I, no. This is, like, I think I this that. is when milk and drugs comes yeah. into the situation. Oh right, because the drugs. milk and drugs. <laughs> there's a there's a yeah a there's a, there's, scout. there's a scout coming to the basketball game, right. yes. and this is like his big shot to get his scholarship. Yes, and, and so this Ant is... wants to make sure that this doesn't happen. Which this is fucking sitcom logic again. How many sitcoms have you seen where some big scout was coming to watch someone perform and they can't fuck it up because Exactly. No wonder why this they... is a college scout coming. It I mean that does that, happen. But <laughs> did, did they ever actually show the college scout? No. Like I don't no. remember actually. Unless it was the guy in the bandana and the glasses I and the mustache. Hope it was. <laughs> <laughs> if that guy's recruiting people, that would have been great. Scan the background if he you want to. He was my this favorite. <laughs> He was good. But before he goes to the game, um, uh, Cheryl is always uh, putting up fronts about about being happy that he has decided to go away to college. So uh, with a big old glass of milk, she says, uh, uh, I'm, I'm very happy for you. Drink your milk before you go to the basketball game, mm-hmm. which he takes take, with him and take these, take these cookies with you. Yes. And it's been drugged. And he eventually uh, collapses. At on the, the court. court. Yes, on the court yeah. at the basketball game. He so, like runs into a padded wall pretty he, hard. Pre- yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. I've seen that happen at basketball games. <laughs> <laughs> and where does he wake up? Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> he wakes up in a room in the attic that his aunt has like fixed up for him, but it has all of his like childhood toys. Yeah. I'm pretty and sure I saw little weird as fuck. bowling pins in there. There's yeah. A, there's Those like stackable and... rings for like babies. Yes. It was like, there was a raggedy Andy doll. Yeah. Like it was creepy as fuck. It's so, and I can't put justice to, uh, uh, Susan Tyrell's performance in this. Just the, the little things she says, they can be funny. They can be, uh, creepy, uh, again, she she flips that switch very easily. Yeah. Um, yeah, but she's but, fascinating to watch in these parts. Yeah, and she's basically infantilizing him. I suppose yes. that's the thing. She wants to keep him eternally as like a uh, a baby. She basically. yeah. Or she was a young person that needs like, her. She, yeah, she wants to keep him the baby, but she also has like a weird incestual fascination with she, him because yes. he's the man in her life, and it's creepy as fuck. Oh yeah, because uh, uh, what's her name, Marge? Margie. Margie. Yeah. Margie's like, I know a, a very cute 35-year-old man that would be right up your alley, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> Which will do a whole crisis for uh, us around that age uh, mm-hmm. watching this movie. Yeah, because I am older than 35. <laughs> and So yeah. we were trying to guess the age of uh, Cheryl at this point. Mm-hmm. And by God, she is older than me. I gar- I, she is older than me. <laughs> Holly, she is. She is older than me. <laughs> she is definitely older than you. Okay. By okay. a lot. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. By a lot. thank you. So you're, you're good. But maybe Appreciate she likes it. younger guys. Maybe that's I hope that's it. I think that's what she was getting at. Well, I can't well, see I can anybody relate. with a beehive hairdo uh, like Margie has and, and go like you're anything less than 60, but you know, apparently. Right. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, okay, so uh, with the basketball game, well, we never really hear what the fallout of that is, but it's assumed that like that was his big shot and mm. it just got screwed over. 
And so now he's back in the uh, the clutches of Aunt Cheryl. Yes, he always some uh, circumstances always forcing him back into her arms, whether yeah. he wants to or not. Um, Which, if she knows anything about basketball scouting, <laughs> that's not how that works, Cheryl. <laughs> He did really right. well at the beginning of the right, game. Right, yeah, he did really well. So it's yeah. <laughs> And the scout knows his stats. Yes. Mm-hmm. So You done the, screwed up, Cheryl. Okay. The detectives <laughs> are like circling. Holly's bringing her own experiences. <laughs> I'm <but>. sorry. <laughs> no, that's what you do. I work at a college. I know. <laughs> well, the detectives are like circling around this, right? As uh, uh, the uh, Bose Fenson detective seems to get further away from what's actually going on, and the other detective is kind of closing in on what's going on. Mm. Right. Julie, at one point, is recruited by Billy to go and distract his grand or his aunt yes while he goes and tries to find some evidence in the right because the there's there is yeah. a weird little coffin like jewelry box yeah thing. she brings a hope in. chest no okay. that's a coffin that's a mini yeah. coffin it looks yeah. like the little model coffins they have for like when you when you pick out a casket that's fucking creepy no they do have them <laughs> have you not seen them i have i haven't every, been to a every once in a while they'll end up at like goodwills and shit just a little one like just, just like, little like foot long size like versions that of did the look big, like that. that yeah, yeah. That oh looked yeah. Like that. yeah yeah, yeah that okay. looked like the big versions of caskets yeah Interesting. Uh, sometimes they do just like a corner, like the corner of the casket. Oh yeah, that, yeah okay, I've that seen I've that. Seen, yes. Okay, they also they used to do like the mini ones. Gotcha. But she's got collectibles and stuff in here, mm-hmm. and so she, she she's showing Billy, and she brings out a charm bracelet, and she's like, "This is your mother's. She was wearing it when she died." <laughs> she tries to put it on. She him. does, and it's just like, yeah. "Whoa!" What was it that he saw? Because he was like, "I got to go back up there and actually find." Yeah, well, because he's he he's he's coming ac- Yeah, he's coming across pictures of Chuck and letters from Chuck. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. right. He finds a letter from Chuck, which mm-hmm. is okay. So. The, the, this is the the guy who's uh, got the, uh, the the shrine, shrine in the basement. Yeah. So Aunt Cheryl tells Billy that Chuck was a guy that her mother dated at one mm-hmm. point. Yes. And uh, we know that that's not true because she's right. going down there and worshiping him. So we're like, right. we, we know. We know, Aunt Cheryl. This is actually your boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I had a boyfriend once. Very... Uh, Carrie White's mom, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, right for sure. And I was a little confused because he looks a lot like the guy at the, the beginning, the dad at the beginning. Yeah. And so I was a little confused about who we were talking about. Right, because I was like, was it, was that the I know it looked a lot like him. I was yeah. like, I'm confused. But anyway, at one point when she's down there, I can't remember because this reveal um, wasn't handled. I don't think like the the best way for maximum impact. Oh yeah, You're right. it no. was, seems yeah. like because at some point Julie ends up like in this cellar. And well, when we go back to the part where um you said uh, Billy brings Julie over to distract his, oh right, right. to distract right. her while he goes up and searches. This seems like a bad idea for answer. Uh, yeah, but I but I don't think they 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 have no idea how far she's gone at this point. Right, I mean Billy but does because. But that's the scene I think you're talking about where it's the reveal is where she's down in the basement talking to the shrine and then just casually like turns to go up to answer the door and we see the the oh, skeleton yes, on a bed. laying there. Yeah. That mm-hmm. looks like it's been chained to a wall. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's very psycho, but not with that kind of reveal. Right. Right. Because right. yeah. it would have been scarier if uh, if Julie would have seen it later. Yes. But I guess they did save a reveal for when because when Julie's uh, actually yes. down there. And find out that the guy's pickled head is yeah. in, a, in a jar. She's been, she's been pickling for years. <laughs> I do like that they came that came back around. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we it barely nice. glimpsed it the first time. Yeah. It was like, Ugh. and we're like, is it, where's Because like head? the movie opens with her like having like a three thousand jars of pickled things on her counter. Yeah, so I I'm, I like that that came back around. Right. Very nice, very creepy. <laughs> um, but Julie ended up in the basement because she went to distract. Uh, Cheryl, and she got smacked in the head with a meat mallet. Yeah, because yeah. There's, a, there's a scene. It's great, uh, you know, because of Susan Tyrell's like performance. Yes. She takes out the the mallet, <laughs> slamming the steak, tenderizing you know, the meat. Yeah, and you're like, I know where that mallet is going. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> this is a big one. And and I like that the girl playing Julie. Um, you can see in her face that she also knows where that's going. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because she's like, as she's talking to her, and she's like pounding it, and then she's kind of like going back and forth between calm and psychotic you see julie like zo- like zoom in on the mm-hmm. the mallet like you can you can tell that she's afraid that's where it's gonna go but once aunt cheryl starts crying oh, i'm just afraid he's like gonna leave me and all that like julie her guard comes down yeah and yeah. they hug and then she's like why don't you go get me something out of the 
out of the freezer and then clock. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought she was in the freezer, honey. I thought she was dead at that point. Yeah. Because later oh, yeah. there's blood all over the uh, inside of the ice box. Yes. Right. Which uh, I mean that was funny because <laughs> <laughs> Susan Tyrell's got it. She opens it, doesn't seem to notice it while there's other people there and has to come back and like with her shawl. shawl. Yeah. <laughs> and start wiping it down. Yeah. She does a bunch of stuff like that like cuz this is the point I think in the movie where she it's about the time she cuts her hair, right? Yeah. She yeah. goes full crazy. Oh yeah. yeah. She's chopped her off. When she's up there with she's got Billy in the in the bed, right? Yep. And she's like, you know, she's that was when she was force feeding him the milk. The milk yeah, yeah cuz she keeps drugging the milk and force feeding. Cuz at this so point she I mean, she was slowly drugging the milk before just to kind of make him out of it. But now she's poured like an abundance of that poison, whatever it is, yeah. into the milk. So he's getting like violently sick at this point. I think it's because like, you know, he's getting more like, I, you know, there's something wrong here. Either oh, yeah. Maybe he's going to go to the cops. Uh, he's going to get out of the relationship with her and out of the house. Yeah. yeah. She can tell that, he, that she's losing him. Yes. But, but because he went and up so in she the loses attic, it more. Yeah. Yeah. Goes on. I like that little moment where it's like, she's all like, yep, you're going to stay here with me. And then the phone rings. She's like. Just a minute. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, she has a she, she, she so was good. she was about to like confess that she killed his mom, and then he she was like, "Oh, phones are in. Hold on." Like one moment. <laughs> yeah, so good. Just, yeah. Again, the uh, turns on a dime, and it's great. And is it? It's all because he finds in the little uh, coffin his box, birth certificate and a yeah. note. Yeah. yeah. From what Chuck. Shocking discovery. Do we make? Cheryl is Billy's mother. Dun dun. Dun. Mm-hmm. Chuck was your father. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> and so she actually cut the brakes and killed his parents or his, sorry, that's her sister in his, or her wife, yeah. her husband. His adoptive parents, yeah. Yes, yeah. because mm-hmm. she had Billy gave to her sister to adopt. Mm-hmm. But then she. Chuck wanted to, didn't want nothing to do with her. He right. left her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Chuck's a bastard. Yeah. So um, we assume that she gave Chuck a lot of milk. Oh, I assume uh, so. Oh, yep. Him up in the basement. And, I don't because so, she says uh, something like, "Don't make me do that to you." You know, right. I, like I kept him around. Don't make me do that. To I you just too. can't see like a post breakup conversation where he agrees to sit down and have a big glass of milk. Maybe she's like, "Drink it," and she hmm. forces him to. Okay. Drink she, the yeah, milk. she tries to force um, Billy in this movie a little. Yeah, bit. I can she, see like, that happening. Mouth, well, I can down. see that happening more than I can see it happening. Well, I see a frying pan over the head. Oh, I see a frying pan over the head and then milk for okay. Chuck. Sure, sure. And she's not above that because again, yeah. she goes from uh, yelling at people who enter her home like right off the bat, right? Which is uh, <laughs> with a crowbar. Which, which is a great <laughs> to just go from zero to sixty when people are walking into your house. Like, what are you doing here? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, she's intense. Oh, she's intense. <laughs> I mean, it. if someone walked into my house, I was I'd, gonna say I'd yeah, with a crowbar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If someone walked. Yeah, if, if anyone I'm not expecting is walking into my house, yeah. Mm. And that happens a lot in this movie. Like at a certain point, you're just like, yeah, stop walking into her house, right? For yeah. if for no reason, it's not your house. For number two, she's gonna kill you, right? Yeah. Julie, we find out, has survived. She's down in the cellar, yeah. and yeah. she uh, does find the remains of uh, Chuck, mm-hmm. right? And I mean, they get into a chase. And sure, well, because this is like this is the moment where it feels the most like slasher movie ish, right? Yeah, like, this is the point. Yeah, where we get to it because now we're we're slowly getting rid of all of our locations and just ending up in the house at night with a storm coming. Mm-hmm. I think that's maybe it. Like all these movies, and maybe you know, they all slasher films tend to have that thing of like you know. When things are getting out of control in the final act, the storm comes. There's yeah. always the wind, the lightning machine, the rain, the fog, and all. That. I love the look of all this stuff in these mm-hmm. in these kind of classic movies. And so, gone completely, Pamela Voorhees. Yes, uh, completely. She, she ends up. Um, Aunt Cheryl ends up chasing. Um, was it Millie? Midge. Midge? Margie. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Holly. <laughs> around don't you forget margie (laughs) well because margie is like there's something going on she overhears this conversation of you know like i'm your i'm at you're actually your mother and all this other stuff and margie stays in the goddamn house longer than she should stay in the goddamn house yeah she's hiding in closets she's uh in rooms sneaking up on doors listening to everything she's like you said she's very ballsy yeah she is even once she gets on the porch she doesn't move in a hurry like Mm -mm. that slow walk through the yard is what gets her yeah i'd be (laughs) running i'm gonna tiptoe away like 
think, you know, maybe she won't hear me if I, because whatever. Bad move. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bad because yeah. it turns out the purring crazy lady is out there, <laughs> comes at her with a machete. Yeah. Right. Uh, and hacks her to death. This is, this, <laughs> oh, it's, it's the, yeah, it, yeah, right across the stomach, and then, oh, yeah, gets her. I see this, from this to the end of the movie, it's, feel, it's very, it's very quick, it's very, uh, it does feel like the end of Friday the 13th. Like, it does. Yeah, she straight up becomes Pamela Voorhees She does, at this she really point. does, like, uh, machete and all. Yeah, mm-hmm. screaming and you crazy know, hair. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she gets Margie. Mm-hmm. Um, then she gets the, uh, the cop who... F- Yes. Figures out what's going on. Yeah, yeah. He ends up coming in the house, reaching for a light, and gets his hand lopped off. Yeah, yeah. And then he gets it in the neck. Yeah, so he's down and out. Yep. He's gone. But Julie's still alive. She witnesses that. And why she didn't yell to that guy like "Look out" or something? That's we'll what I'm know. saying. Like, yeah, she. Yeah, Shirley yeah. was hiding behind the door. Julie's watching him walk in. Yell out, something. Jesus Christ! Although she has been hit in the head a lot, and there's more True. to come. <laughs> True, she gets because head, they get into a chase scene. She gets which, head in the head with the with a meat tenderizer, and then again with a rock. Yeah, she gets. They end up getting yeah. into a big fight in a, a lagoon, and she gets hit over the head with a rock like three times. Yeah, and this mm-hmm. is one of those scenes I was talking about because I I don't know if that was a real rock, but she was actually hitting her. Oh yeah, yeah. right. I like, was like, this has to be a rubber rock, uh, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. She's beating, yeah, that's just right there on screen. Yeah. Beating her over the head. And that is Susan Tyrell wrestling on all that water. Right. Yeah. yeah. I was looking, I'm like, that's her. Oh, right. yeah. And for it's sure. Crazy. Yeah. She goes hard, man. She goes hard. And she, like, uh, drowns, drowns Julie? In the, well, no, Julie tries to drown her, and then she beats her over the head with a rock, and then they cut away from that. Yeah. Like, on the third beat, they're just yeah. like, gone. We assume that she passed out and then she left her there i don't know we just I would assume, assume she that. was dead at that point well yeah i thought she was dead the fifth time getting yeah. hit in the head did she come back into the movie yeah, yeah she does see later on when the, the cop brings her in oh yeah. that's right yeah. yeah she did it yeah okay yeah. right right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's the witness basically brought yeah. back at the end to, yes. to id her because things get bad in the house because uh Billy is mobile and making his way through the house. He's still mm-hmm. drugged up and everything, but he's yeah. making his way. And then Cheryl... He goes, like, he, goes, he goes to get the phone. Right. Yeah. He goes to get the phone and try to make a phone call. Crazy she's... Cheryl is there. Yeah. You get that. Her hand just reaches into I love the frame. That. And, and, and it's all covered with like leaves and dirt and yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. gross. And so then there's a little fight with a telephone and strangulation with the cords yeah. and everything and, and promises he's... of never leaving and then doubts and then <laughs> attacking. And then there's well, a lot going on. It, like, promise me you're never going to leave. You're like, I promise. You liar! <laughs> right. you liar. She's yeah. smacking him around. As, right. you know, mm-hmm. More then, injury uh, attorneys are, are going to be called. Yes. The first. But yeah. then she gets stabbed in the heart by Billy because it's a knife. Right. Yeah. Still. That's a hard one to come back from. Stabbed in the heart. But. We have not met Cheryl before, <laughs> and Cheryl <laughs> is a tough lady. <laughs> so she comes back. I mean, because he call. Uh, oh, uh, Billy stabs her. She falls down. He calls the coach because the coach said, "If you ever need help, call me." Mm-hmm. Which is, and you know, he's not going to call the police, right? I mean, but that was the thing where I was like, "Oh, he's calling the police," and you're like, "Oh, no, 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 wait, he won't because the police." <laughs> so he's calling the coach to intercede for him in yes. some way to like. Okay, yeah. you know, because we well, he's this. calling an adult. Yeah, because yeah. he's a child. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this also leads to like uh, I could feel the dread at this point, knowing that he's calling the coach. Is like, oh shit, yeah. the coach is going to yeah. come over. Bose Fenson is still out there as yeah. the cop who thinks they murdered everyone anyway. So you know, there's this is leading to this a is pretty good there. actually because there's no, all it's sorts great. of like Cause different because <laughs> we got the central thing, but we're also bringing people into it. Mm-hmm. Um, it it still works with Bo Svensson's theory about the whole thing. Like coming in to find what he does right. find, kind of would put it all together for him, um, in the wrong way. Right. But, uh, but as after he's done calling the coach, uh, Cheryl's back up behind him, <laughs> oh, pulls yeah. a knife. That one of those shock moments. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. Pulls a knife out and she starts slashing at him, cutting him up at the the side, the back, the neck, and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, he ends up, uh, and then he f- gets the fire poker mm-hmm. yep. and runs her through, mm-hmm. and then she gone. Well, she's not gone yet because she uh, she kisses him uh, oh, before, oh, before, yep. before she uh, oh, departs yeah. this mortal coil. So gross. Yeah, and I know we mentioned it earlier, but she does lick milk <laughs> off his neck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Earlier in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dedication <laughs> to the role. <laughs> um. So she's she she dies. I mean, yeah. that's it. We've killed our monster. Yes. But then we have the backup. Right. <laughs> yes, we have the backup monster. We've got B-Monster. <laughs> yeah. So Bo Svensson shows up, and he's like, aha, I got you now, because here you are again. You, right, who- the coach has already shown up. Yes. The coach is there with him. 
So it's all falling yeah. into place for Bo's fence. And so he pistol whips the coach and he's threatening I think he's threatening Billy. He's going to shoot yeah, him. Yeah, they wrestle. The gun well, gets away. Yeah, but that was... Billy that gets was the a, gun. That was a thing. Like, you know, his whole... It's like he believes this kid to be guilty 100%. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. he's like, he, you know, he's got his 44 Magnum or whatever, and he's going to blow away this unarmed kid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my God. And then yeah. the uh, coach, I think, gets uh, another the fire poker, poker and knocks the gun out of his hand. Right. Yeah. And then Billy gets Oof. the gun. Well, at this point, and we also. Owe- that's when the other cop shows up with Julie and Julie's like, no, she did it. Check the cellar. Check the cellar. Right. The cop's like, shouldn't I check He's like, shouldn't I check the cellar? No, get her out of here. Yeah, Bo Sensen has, has, he's got a one track yeah. mind. Like yeah. He has solved the case. He's found his killers. He does not care about anything else. Yeah. And so he is going to blow away Billy. But the tables get turned. They do. Billy gets a hold of the gun and then he's got the drop on Bo Sensen. Mm-hmm. And we're like, what's going to happen? And I suppose it wouldn't make Jesus happy, but uh, Billy blows that guy away. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I forgot about the creepy make... Jesus. Oh, yeah, like, creepy Jesus. I forgot about What's creepy Jesus. Yeah. Shroud of Turin Jesus. I don't it kind of looked like it. Kinda it kind of looked yeah. like it. It was. This is yeah. a portrait that's hanging on a wall like, mm-hmm. in their yeah. house. Yeah, because like the there's creepy... a lot of there's a lot of like Mary statues and religious artifacts yeah, like throughout the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and there's one particular really creepy Jesus picture. Yeah. Ink blot Jesus. Yeah, yeah. it's right. creepy. Yeah, yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it like doesn't have eyes. It has like holes where eyes should be. Yeah, and yet yeah. it feels like it still follows you. It's like an impression of Jesus. It's very <laughs> creepy. <laughs> it's very creepy. Yeah, like a death mask. Yeah. Yeah. But so I guess it's a it's an audience uh, it's that's a moment for the audience. Right? Yeah, we're like okay, you know this guy's getting his due. You yeah, know. Um, and he gets shot a couple times and then dies. Thank so God. Then the the wrap up on this movie, right? It's uh-huh. a lifetime movie wrap up. Yeah, it really what is. The hell, <laughs> what? Billy went to trial. <laughs> and within four hours was acquitted. Acquitted of yeah. all charges based on temporary insanity. Yeah. yeah. And they're both attending <laughs> school in Denver. This is like an on-screen legend that comes up yes. at the end of the movie. Yeah. And you're like, this isn't based on like a true story. No. Right. <laughs> we didn't. But they want you to know that after Billy shot a detective to death, that he would be okay. Yeah. He would not <laughs> like, go to jail. Woo. Because you okay, want, you want that. Like, it's yeah, good we, that he, we want Billy to have a good life. Right. The bad guy was vanquished, but he was also vanquished in a way that could lead to jail time. Yeah. So they wanted to make sure you knew Billy was fine. Yeah. After all that, which I appreciate, he's gonna mm-hmm. right. Yeah, he, he's gonna be okay. There you go. Until the sequel. I know. Where's Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker Two? Mm. You got an idea for uh, getting us into? I think we call. I think we already named the Pickler, the which Pickler. is the sequel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which will be the sequel to Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we've told you all about the movie, but would we recommend that you watch it? Because according to uh, the Freak Show rules, I mean, if we all say that you have to, then you have to. It's, yeah, it's uh, legally yeah, binding. Rules. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you listen to this podcast. But in order to find it's out... It's in the iTunes uh, <laughs> agreement uh, that yeah, you all say. So, yeah, we know you've all said yes to that, so <laughs> sorry. And by hitting those like and subscribe <laughs> buttons, which you're about to do. Um, so uh, b- before we tell you whether you should watch this movie or not, we're going to answer some of your mail. In order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Has he been pickled? <laughs> he smells pickled. Yeah, he smells. Like I think he, spent some time I think he pickled, naturally right? pickles. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Oh, He's always naturally pickling. There's always Igor Brine. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Keep him in a pickle jar until Saturday night. Is that his doghouse? Yeah, yeah. Just a pickle, pickle jar. jar. Just, uh, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine him getting in at the end of the night and being like, ah. He just dunk, <laughs> dunks right in there. Well, it kind of looks like a pickle. He's I got know. that shape to yeah. him. That's what I'm saying. I can't imagine. And this. the color. I'm just imagining like <laughs> one of those old school dunk tanks. Like that's yeah. like yeah. Igor that exactly, getting into his pickle house. There's even a little window house. in it that he can look out when he's self-pickling. The self pickling Pickler. <laughs> well, uh, the sequel to the sequel. <laughs> we know that you good folks out there want to keep Igor 
gainfully employed. In, in pickle juice. Yes. <laughs> so in order to do that, you should uh, send us your thoughts and comments on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Sorry. Twitter. Don't send us pickles. <laughs> at Saturday Freak Show. Uh, you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, about tonight's movie, Butcher Baker, Nightmare Maker, Asobi Detura says, This film has some really uncomfortable scenes with the ant character. Mm-hmm. Yep. Susan Tyrell's performance is legit upsetting. It's not a bad film, and it has a positive portrayal of a gay character. Yep, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yep, we like the coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, Talk Spooky to me says, If this was remade today, who would you see as the girlfriend, the ant, Billy, and the coach? Oh, Ooh. um... Who would okay. be good? Crazy. <laughs> Jessica we get, Lang uh, is the aunt. Okay. That's who I, I would uh, like that. Yeah. Uh, what's her name from uh, from Requiem for a Dream? Um, Jennifer, Jennifer Connelly? Connelly? Nope. Ellen Burstyn? <laughs> Ellen Burstyn. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. As the aunt. No. Oh, wow. That's, oh, yeah. She's, really, she's so too old. old, yeah. too old I know. Yeah, I was like, you I, guys are going too old I here. I know, but I'd like to see her in the role. I know. She's yeah. supposed to be 35. Can we, not, is not. can we not? Can we not? Grant Parrish says, I know nothing of this but the title, but this one's going to be a 10 out of 10. <laughs> not since Stuff Stephanie in the Incinerator has a movie title jumped out and caught me. <laughs> so all the kudos. I uh, love Stuff <laughs> Stephanie in the wow, Incinerator. Okay. I, can't imagine with, I can't imagine with a title that good, I can't imagine that movie's any good. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, Adam Kaler says, I don't remember much about this movie, but the one thing I do is the performance of Susan Tyrell. Mm-hmm. She brings an energy and intensity to each of her roles, including this and even her Oscar-worthy performance as Claudia Furstein in The Chipmunk Adventure. I wish she was appreciated more. Freak Show, do you have a favorite performer who brings 110% to every role, regardless of how good the movie is? Hmm. Huh. Who's never given? I feel like that's Nick well, Cage. Yeah, Lately, yeah. Yeah, Nick Cage gives us all no, every time. He, he goes 110%. All right, yeah. Oh, in okay. everything, yeah. yeah. He gives us all, yeah. yeah. Yep. I feel like that's the answer. Okay. Yeah, I'll was, go with that. I was going to go with Peter Cushing, but that's just me. Old old timey. I Maybe feel Tom like Hardy, I right? feel like I always see him in the same. Tom Hardy does Tom give Hardy us all. Dedicates yeah, that's he does. He gives us all. Yep. Yeah. I mean, have you seen that? <laughs> Uh, last week we watched a movie called frailty Uh, travis legler Mm -hmm. says bill paxton is also the only actor to put into the or the only actor to put into the eye of the tornado would be turned into a pile of talking shit make it out the other side on both situations very true that's true yeah uh teresa ann said frailty is the most stephen king feeling non-stephen king movie i've ever seen oh yeah it very is that. yeah very much how yeah. was that did you guys all recommend it yeah, yeah. it's good okay. it was really when good. we, we said you would recommend. we said you'd probably recommend <laughs> yeah. it. yeah oh, okay I, think you we'll would go. Like I started it. listening to the show and i was just like nah i want to watch the movie yeah you I should like, watch, no, the watch the movie no, i want to watch the movie you should watch it yeah but sean you need to like watch it like in a whole sitting. Yeah, like not, don't, tomb, no, no. don't tombstone okay, this okay, shit. Okay. Don't tombstone oh, this you shit. Probably I watched one movie no, in no, pieces. No. You probably didn't get to that point. In the, was it the frailty episode we were talking yeah, about how uh, you watched Tombstone? We yeah. were on a tangent. Yeah, we about talked about it. Watching. <laughs> you guys are the worst. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you finish Tombstone? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, listen, case in point, Sean. I said. Are curious. I said on that episode I would ask for an update to see if you'd finished Tombstone, and you have not finished Tombstone, right? So it, if I don't say it, they don't hear it. it proven uh, our point. Moving on. Uh, Peter Gett says, I've seen Frailty, but it didn't stick in my memory. At the time, I thought it was overrated, and I can't think of any plot point at all. Okay. You might be thinking of a different movie. Yeah, because I think the ending of this would stick. With it does. Yeah, yeah, I feel it like does. it does. And at I, the very least, the ending. Was, as yeah. we talked about, that is a bad title for that movie. It's a so very bad title. of a different movie. Yeah. Uh, the week before, we watched a movie called Highlander. Carson Snar said, "I always think of Clancy Brown as Gus from Pet Cemetery 2. Yeah, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he's great in that. Uh, Michael Whitaker says the Highlander TV series was a Sci-Fi Channel mainstay for years. That I wanted to mention. That is the Highlander I know, and not having watched it, but I saw so many promos for the goddamn Highlander TV series. Was it on the Sci-Fi Channel? I was thinking I it was, it was on USA. USA. Yeah, yeah. Well, was it? I thought, uh, but I think they're owned by yeah. both. Oh, uh, okay. But it was on USA. Okay. Because I remember whoever plays the dark, the who's the dark haired guy who plays in the, the highlight. Yeah. It's Adrian yeah. Paul. Something yeah. like that. I remember Duncan seeing McLeod. Yes. Seeing yeah. him a lot with a samurai sword. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I'm pretty sure I remember seeing that on USA. Yes. I'm, okay. Yeah. USA. Uh, Maya Manson says, do flash Gordon in the 1984 re-release of Metropolis and you can put queen on your wall. 
We, we, we did right. flesh Gordon. Yeah, we, yep. Well, we, I wasn't here for it, but you guys did it. Did they do a Metropolis with Queen? Well, technically, they, so I think they have a song in it, but the music is actually, it's all stuff done by Giorgio Moroder. He okay. like did a, a score and re-edited it and colorized, kind of, color tinted Metro- Metropolis Oy, uh, in 1984. Versions. Um, Diz World says there is a remake of Highlander in the works starring Henry Cavill and being directed by one of the guys from John Wick. I mean, I'm okay with I'm Henry. I'm not mad at it. Yeah. I'm okay with Henry Cavill. I would rather see Henry Cavill play the Kurgan. I think that would be. <laughs> yeah. I think that would be more interesting. He kind of, he no, especially now based on his roles, he fits the Highlander part, the immortal part. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He fits that part too well. I would rather see him as the Kurgan. That's a good give idea. Give him a challenge. Yeah, yeah give him a challenge. Make idea. him a bad guy make him a and bad make guy. him like let him like let him chew on it a Put little bit. Put weird makeup yeah. on him and yeah. stuff. Make him like not so pretty. Yeah. There you go. So if you're listening out Do there, that. Chad Strid. Sure. Well, okay. That yeah. would be more interesting, and I would want to go see it more if that was the case. Hmm. All right. The week before we watched a movie called Cyborg, Pat Hetfield <laughs> said uh, the movie The Vindicator was brought up during a listener mail portion of your uh, fine program, and it was mentioned that the movie will be added to the list of later freak show content. Mm-hmm. I just want to say that I can't wait for that, but I'm a fan, too. And also, if you want another good cyborg movie to watch, I recommend Steel and Lace, oh. a movie that features slimy villains, interesting characters, imaginative kills. And imaginative kills and good performances. That, that like title is intriguing. That know, sounds right? like a robot sex movie. Yeah. It does. Is Steel it? And lace. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to <laughs> Maybe. look that up. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much, each and every one of you, for writing in. We appreciate it. And now we're going to go around the table and tell you if we should watch tonight's movie, starting with Colin. Oh, shit. Colin gets to go first tonight. Colin, what did you think of Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker? You own it. Yeah, it was. So own it. So it came out from Code Red uh, video a couple months ago, and that was actually oh, it was a couple months ago. Yeah. Oh wow. I think it was this year, and that was the first time that I'd ever seen the movie um, because I think for years I skipped it. Uh, you know, because it looked under night warning, mm. it looked like a bad. 80s slasher movie. Okay. And now, of course, I'm at that point in my life where I'm <laughs> going back and watching all the bad 80s slasher movies and going like, oh, there's like good ones like Blood Rage. And mm-hmm. I think this is also not quite the stratospheric, uh, you know, uh, fun time as Blood Rage, but this was a surprisingly good movie, I thought. Um, a lot of it hangs on uh, Susan Tyrell's uh, lunatic uh, <laughs> performance in this um Sometimes when you watch, I think, you know, Hollywood's nailed it. It's like when you watch certain actors, I think Nick Cage is another one of these in, in some cases where you're like, I don't know if the people around him are safe or, you know, <laughs> or the people around her are safe, right. at the, you know, when this was actually happening. So it feels kind of, you know, dangerous. Yes. You know, uh, there's, it's a, good there's energy a bit to of have stress, like this, yeah. you know, to watch. Yeah. Because it feels legitimate. Um, but yeah, it was surprising. I mean, even while we're sitting here talking about it, the plot machinations of this movie are there's a lot of stuff going on and it all does kind of like click together um yeah i was i was i guess i was surprised more than anything that it a held your attention it started off with like i mean that was a grabber (laughs) you know it like came out of the gate strong it was like Uh, bam you're gonna watch this thing and you're like yes i am and then it was like (laughs) okay we're kind of wandering and then it was like uh, and it built toward this you know crazy slasher movie conclusion and so yeah i i would heartily recommend that you check out uh butcher baker nightmare maker one of the best of its vintage holly what do you think um yeah the first few minutes of this movie i thought we were going to be watching something very different Mm -hmm. um that opening scene was was something um and it had me hooked but then i started getting the baby vibes and <laughs> if your baby sense was tingling yeah oh, it was it was um kind of oh that's that what you, <laughs> what you just said sounds real gross <laughs> you have an adult sense too or just a baby sense is it an infant sense does it grow no it's just older? it's just a, the baby movie <laughs> yeah sense. the uh, baby yeah you're um, just like, i feel the baby yeah. <laughs> Is it dark sitting no, in I, a crib somewhere? I did. I had that. I had that same vibe. And um, oh, what was that movie we watched? Fuck, I think it was a Sean pick. <laughs> Probably. Um, you don't even know what she's talking. No, I do. <laughs> it was. Oh god, damn it! I remember there was Describe like. It. Well, you know me. I can never remember shit. Um, fuck. I there was wasn't there like 
like drawers that had like snakes in them or something. Oh, that Kathy's have? curse. Kathy's curse. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I got vibes from that too. Oh, okay. It's a very <laughs> similar. <Ouch. laughs> it's a very similar. It's a very similar Colin, vibe. Your mother's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very similar vibe, like a weird ancestral family, like just weirdness. Um, and I, I'm, I'm starting. To, I mean, I'm not starting to realize. I've got, kind of always known that that's not really my bag. Oh. Um. Sleepwalkers was an exception because that movie's batshit crazy. Because of cats. Because of cats. You know, I love a cat army. Um, <laughs> this movie's bananas, but I just don't like that vibe. I don't like that that icky feeling. Because <laughs> this movie, like, I had it the whole time. Now, I I will absolutely say Susan Terrell is giving it her all, and she is this movie. She is spectacular. She does an amazing performance. It's like her and Louise Lasser. Yeah. <laughs> it's like she's she is so Put them good in the movie together. Ew, the world isn't ready. <laughs> oh no, so much. So much food there was a lot of milk and blood rage too. So there was yeah. a lot of milk and blood and rage, right? And, oh, so much. Um, so yeah, like Susan Darrell, perfection. She was amazing, and I I just don't think that this type of movie is my thing. Um, because I wouldn't watch this again. I can't honestly say I would recommend it to anyone really I, I think you can skip it but again that's just my preference I think it's just because that's not my bag um yeah because I'm not like I'm not like morally opposed to this movie although I'm morally opposed to a lot of things that happen in this movie um but I just don't like that uncomfortable feeling that I had the entire movie mm. that's the thing I don't like that at all um so I'm not gonna recommend it but I can understand why it Grabs attention, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess. Michaela, what'd you think? Oh, man. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't like both titles. I don't like either one. And I don't yeah. think either one is appropriate for this movie. But Night warning, especially. That just, that's just that's it makes so no bad. Sense. No. Um, this, I at least understand the, you know, the um, nursery rhyme aspect of aspect. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get like, that but and like this was a time when we were naming movies weird shit like that too you yeah. know so um you know I was really looking forward to an 80s slasher movie so I was kind of disappointed at first when it turned out to not be a slasher movie and be more of a lifetime movie but, <laughs> but I also enjoy lifetime movies, movies so. <laughs> that's true <laughs> that's but true I also enjoy lifetime movies so I just had to gear shift a little bit <laughs> but yeah. um I which mean they should have done at the beginning of this movie and they could have avoided that crash. Continue. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Th I mean, wow, you can't beat that cold open. You know, that was incredible. And I actually felt like people were actually in danger while they were making that too. And yeah. I did not like that. But um, I mean, it's crazy and it's uncomfortable and it's it, everybody's doing the most involved with this movie. And I appreciate that and respect that. Yeah, I do want to see Louise Lasser and uh, what's her name? Susan, Susan Tyrell, like yeah. go against each other. Like that's Ooh. our Avengers, right? <laughs> that's our Civil War movie. That's our yeah. that's our Marvel Civil War. <laughs> like, and they're adult children too, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, and, and then throw milk. a cast of the baby milk. in there, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and more milk. Yes, yeah. more milk, more pie violence. Yeah, let's give it pie violence. Yeah, see, there was no pie violence in this movie. <laughs> no, there was meat bakers violence. in the title. Yeah. Was pickle violence. Yeah. Um. So. Even though I don't like the titles and I didn't like that it was a slasher movie, I still enjoyed it for what it was. And it's still weird. And it's milk is, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the uh, Kayla now has gonna, separate thoughts on milk yeah. because of this movie. The effect it's going to have on my opinion of milk is going to linger with me for a little bit. Cause that is just, a movie that has an impact. Yeah, so oh, I think well. I have to recommend it. So, <laughs> Holly Sean, needs a shower, think? and Michaela's like, no oh, more milk. Keep That's milk away. Holly needs a shower and a shot of milk. I don't need to see someone <laughs> licking milk off another person ever, but especially not in the <laughs> context of this movie. Yeah, for real. So, Sean, what would you think? Yeah, so I think we've decided tonight this is a movie that's going to make you feel things, uh, good, bad, <laughs> one way or the other. Um, I, for one, uh, Susan Tyrell, I can't not be fascinated watching her in this movie, and I think that goes a particularly long way in this. Um, I think the story uh, and the story is pretty good as well. Everything kind of um, comes together in, in a, I felt like a natural way, based on all the characters. Um, yeah, it's... It's a weird movie. It's going to make you feel things good and bad. You're going to come out of this movie with opinions one way or another. But Susan Tyrell really knocks it out of the park. Um, and I find that performance fascinating. I would definitely watch this again just for her. Um, I'm going to recommend it because I think 
Um, yeah, I think that performance is it would it will do a lot for you. So yeah, I recommend Butcher Baker, Nightmare Maker. All right, I'm in for it. <laughs> she crazy, awesome. <laughs> And we didn't, we, uh, not everybody here knew that, but, uh, the Joe Bob Briggs show did a double feature mm-hmm. of yes. this and the baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it was like, oh, wow. Uh, match made in heaven. Vibes. Uh, so <laughs> next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we going to watch next week? Are we still? And is Bill Paxton in it? Are we still in the Summer of Canon? <laughs> this is our last stop okay. on the Summer of Canon. It's coming to a close. The train's so. coming in? Yeah, the train's coming in. Um, <laughs> All right, so we watched we watched Arnold versus the Devil. We watched oh. the Devil in a musical, mm-hmm. but we have not seen Chuck Norris versus the Devil. Oh boy! What? In Hellbound, oh, last yeah. movie Canon ever made. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. So we're gonna watch Hellbound from 1994. All right, all righty. Okay, Chuck so Norris versus the Devil. Get ready for the jokes. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. that yeah. is what you need to sell me on the yeah, movie. Yeah. So I'm in. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Hellbound next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us as always. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.